Welcome back to part three of our Dev Diary series. We're building a Wordle game and taking a deep dive into the coding process, trying to show you kind of under the hood some of the thinking that goes into making a complex game in Scratch. In our last episode, we managed to get our text input system adapted so that we could enter multiple letters across the screen to form five letter words. Now we need to expand that out to six different rows of words so that we can type them one at a time. We also need to figure out how to move backwards so that when we hit a delete key, we can go back and revise the words that we've entered, but not too far because of course, we uh, once we've entered a word, we don't want to be able to change it. So it's gonna take a little bit of tricky coding and we'll get to that right now. I'm back inside my Wordle Scratch file. You can find the URL for that down below in the file description. And if you ever get stuck, you can click on that link to bring yourself back to the finished project as far as I've coded it so far. And so you can always catch up that way if you get behind. So I've inserted some new sprites in here since the last time that I saw you guys. I've entered a backspace key and an enter key here that we're gonna be using today to move forward and backwards through our project. I've also inserted a title across the screen. I had another look at the Wordle game and realized that we needed some plain text at the top to um, kind of um, uh, make this look a little more like the original project. That's gonna force us to move things around a little bit. I've got a starting X, Y coordinate. I'm inside the letter sprite right now where we're adding the letter tiles across the screen. And I sized things out and realized that, uh, especially with the title here, we're gonna run out of real estate to draw across the screen here. So I'm gonna update these X, Y coordinates to minus 200 and then 110 moving the graphic down a little bit. I've also resized the graphic down to 80% from the 100 that it was at before, and that should help place things better. I'm gonna go back to my repeat loop here where I was originally moving 50 something steps. I changed that to 45 here as well so that the tiles are, since they're smaller, they can be placed a little closer together now. And if I click the green flag, you can see that I've got um, something a little more compressed here that fits underneath the Wordle text. Beautiful. Okay, now that we've got our first row set up properly, let's go ahead and set up the other five rows inside here. We're just going to do that by repeating this draw loop six times. So let's go ahead and grab another repeat block here and we'll change that to repeat six times. And we're going to repeat inside there. So we're going to go around six times each time drawing one entire row here. After we finish drawing the row by creating clones of our letters block here, we have to reset our tile back to the far left hand of the screen and then bring it down a little bit like a, a typewriter carriage return. We go tick, 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 and then down and back and then go tick, 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 like that again and over and over again. All right. so. Outside of this repeat five times loop, but inside this, the six times loop, we're going to set our X back to its starting position, which is minus 200. And we're gonna move these blocks down by 50 steps. So let's go ahead and change our Y by minus 50, because we're moving it down rather than up here. Let's have a look at what that looks like. And there we go. So we've got our six rows of text here ready to go. And we've left some room on the side here for our virtual keyboard, which we'll be adding in a later section here. These two keys, uh, the enter and the backspace are all that we're gonna need today in order to uh, get our current coding objective accomplished. So our objective for today is twofold here. First thing we want to do is set this up so that when we're finished draw, writing one word, we're going to evaluate it. We're not going to do the evaluation part today though. We're just going to set it up so that we can hit an enter key and then start typing in the next row of keys. So that means that when we're done typing the first row until we enter that enter key, we're going to basically have it so that when, if you continue typing letters, nothing's going to happen. 
If you hit this backspace key though, we're gonna blank out these letters. So we're gonna be able to move forwards and backwards through the game. Once we hit enter, we'll go to the next row and then only be able to edit the next row of text. Okay, with our screen properly set up, we can reconnect the main gameplay loop here. This is where all the action's gonna be happening inside our game. I'm gonna tidy things up a little bit. All the blocks in here right now will all have to do with inputting text. So I'm gonna segregate these things off into their own little section here and create a custom block called text input. Just to make our code a little easier to understand here. So I've just defined that and I'm gonna place it in here. So you can see that doesn't really affect the gameplay at all here. Let's just click the green flag and I'll uh, try putting a word in here. Still. Now, as it currently stands, as I keep typing, it's just gonna go down to the next row here. So uh, if I start typing a five letter word like Apple, for example, it's just going to continue filling in down the row here. So we basically, ha our next job is going to have to be to create some kind of a mechanism that makes it so that we can only type in one row at a time until we get a chance to evaluate what we've typed here. So we're gonna click on this enter button here to commit to that first word here. And until we do that, we're gonna have to make it so that nothing, uh, so that we don't start writing on the next row yet. So in order to make this work properly, we're gonna have to start tracking which row of the puzzle we're working on at any given moment. I've already created a variable here called current row which is what we're gonna be using here. So uh, we're gonna to have to initialize that variable at the beginning here. So just before our forever loop here, we'll do a couple of variables. So let's just set current row to one at the beginning here. And then we're going to have to take this text input and set it up so that it does not accept input under certain circumstances, if we've already finished typing in that row, for example. So I'm gonna wrap this up in an if statement, which is what we always do when we want stuff to be working sometimes and not other times. And now we just have to figure out what to put inside this if statement to get it behaving the way that we want it to. So we're gonna to wanna to have our uh, text input here activated in this first row if we're working on the current square one, two, three, four, or five, and we want it to be disabled if we're at six or higher. So we need to start comparing our current square with some kind of a number that's based on the row. Now each row contains five letters and that's consistent throughout our game here. I'm gonna grab a less than sign and plunk it in the middle here. We know we need current square on the left hand side here because we're checking to see if our current square is less than a certain value. Um, now, what do we put on the right hand side here? We have this new variable here called current row, which is equal to one. And we know that there's five spots in each row. So if we set our, uh, our comparison here to be a multiple of our uh, current square, if we multiply it by five, since we do know there's five letters in a square, that should get us a little bit closer to what we need here. So I'm gonna grab a multiplication sign here. So I'm gonna say, if our current square is equal to our current row times five, then really in the first row, if we do the math here, so if I'm comparing my current square, let's say I'm on my, uh, I'm on like square four, four or five here, let's say four. Four is gonna be less than current row of one times five. So it's gonna be less than five. And even if, but if it's five, then that's not gonna work properly. So we actually want it to be less than the next number after this current row. So to fix that, we can just go add a plus sign to this. So I'm gonna take this multiplication here I'm gonna add one to it. There we go. So now if our current square is less than six, so that will be true of one, two, three, four, and five, 
then it's going to allow us to accept text input. Will this row, will this algorithm work for the second row? Well, let's try working the numbers out here. If our current square is equal to six, and we're on row two, uh, we're looking to see if six is less than uh, uh, two times five is 10, and 11 is the number that we're going to be calculating here. So for six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, the next numbers, we're still going to be less and we're going to be able to accept the text input. So that's perfect. This algorithm will work quite nicely here. And we can go ahead and test that out now. So when I click the green flag and I start typing, hello, H-E-L-L-O, and then I try to type an extra number, let's type an A here nothing happens. But if I change that current row to two, let's try that again. I'll try typing hello. And now it's going to let me type in the next row here. And again, nothing's happening. Beautiful. Okay, so we're getting closer here. This is looking good. So at some point here, we're gonna to need to change that row number by one. Let's set this back to one here. And once we're done entering a row, we're gonna to wanna to advance that variable. But right now there's nothing stopping. So if we were to put change row number here, it would change the row right away. We need this if statement to be evaluated over and over again until we're finished uh, entering our text input. And you're going to remember, you remember that we're going to have this enter button here that we're going to be able to click to signal that we finished a row here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this if statement inside of a repeat until loop. We're going to want to keep checking this if statement and accepting text input until we click on that enter button. So I have a new variable that I've created here that is called enter key pressed. And we're gonna be using that to evaluate whether I've pressed that button or not. So we have to initialize that. So let's set enter key pressed to zero because it hasn't been pressed. And when it is pressed, we'll change that over to one. And so now we can repeat until here. Let's go to our control blocks and do a repeat until repeat until enter key pressed is equal to one. So um, let's go and grab an equal sign and pop that in there. And we'll put that variable enter key pressed to the left hand side and type a one here. Okay, and once that enter key is pressed, we're gonna wanna advance that variable to the next uh, value. So we're going to change our current row. So outside of the repeat until loop, we're going to change our current row by one and that'll advance us to the next row. So all we have to do now is go over to our enter key and try programming that. So let's go ahead. I've actually gone ahead and done that in advance here. When this sprite's clicked, we're going to do some fancy rollover effects later on and some other things that are going to dress this up. For, but for the moment, we're really, we're waiting for you to let go of that mouse button. We don't want this to be evaluated multiple times if we hold that mouse key down. So when the sprite is clicked, we're going to wait right away for us to let go of the mouse key. And then we're going to set that enter key pressed to one. And that's going to flip that other variable over and that will break us out of that loop. All right, so you'd think this would be working, and the first time I ran this, I kind of expected it to be working, but there's one little step we've forgotten here. Let me just run through this scenario again. So I'm gonna type the word hello here, and I'm gonna keep typing, and it's not accepting input anymore until I hit the enter key. Now, theoretically, I should start typing in the next row, but nothing is happening when I press a keyboard key here. And that is because if we actually look at the value of that enter key press variable, you can see that it is stuck at one right now. So while that's one, this repeat loop will not run anymore. It will not accept text input. So we're gonna have to set that back to zero again in order to get this working. So let's go set 
enter key pressed back to zero again and so that will put us back into this loop again waiting for that key to be pressed so let's try that now i'll type hello now it won't accept any more keyboard input until i hit enter and now i can type and yeah again right to the end of that line and then it won't let me and then when I hit the enter key, A, B, C, D, E, that's working beautiful now. And you can see that every time I hit that enter key, it lets me work on the next row. So in the next lesson, we're gonna be evaluating, before we're allowed to go to the next row, we need to do a couple of things. We need to evaluate this row here and make sure this is the real word that we've entered. And that's where we're gonna get into some interesting work with databases. We're gonna grab a database of, of all the five letter words in the English language and start comparing what we type to that to see to make sure that we actually did type a real word and not just random letters. The other thing we're gonna to have to do is compare the word that we've typed here to um, the actual word that we're trying to guess and see how close we are. And that's another chapter that we'll be covering in the future here. Things are progressing nicely here. The last thing I wanna to accomplish today is I wanna get that backspace key working so that we have the ability to revise what we're typing until we actually click that enter button and commit ourselves to that word we want the ability to edit what we're doing here. So we're gonna use a backspace key to do, to do that. Scratch doesn't have a uh, ability to detect uh, special keys like backspace or enter. So that's why we're gonna to have to use the screen keyboard to do all of this stuff. So um, I've got a back key already set up on the screen here and I've already gone ahead and created this same mechanism here. When the sprite clicked, wait until it's not clicked. Uh, until my mouse is back up again, and that will guard against uh, me hitting that back key, key twice by accident. It's waiting for me to let go of my mouse before it actually processes it. So all we wanna do here is change that current square by minus one. So that'll change the variable around, but it's not gonna change the graphic around the way that we'd like it to. We're gonna to have to do that over in the letters. We're gonna to have to reevaluate um, that, the status of that particular square here. So we're gonna do that inside a broadcast. I'm just gonna broadcast a message here that says, delete one square. All right. And so that will signal the letters block here to go ahead and update that one square. So when it receives delete one square here, we're going to switch the costume back to the blank again. So I'm gonna switch costume to default, which is our blank tile here. Now this isn't gonna work yet though, because when I type hello here, let's do two rows just for kicks and I'll just type something random here. And now when I hit that delete key, you'll see that the entire board has been blanked out here. And that is because, of course, this when I receive applies to every single clone here. We're gonna to wanna to filter this list so that it's only looking at the one particular block here that is mentioned that is the current square. So we can do that the same way we did it up here in the when I started the clone, by evaluating this way, square ID is equal to current square. So uh, so you'll remember that each of these squares has its own ID number. So if the ID number matches the number of the current square, then we're gonna be allowed to switch that costume back to default. So I'm gonna grab an if statement here and make it so that this switch only happens if this is true. I don't have to re-grab this stuff because I can just duplicate this block of type here. And there we go. So if our square ID matches our current square, then we're gonna be allowed to switch costume back to default and that will effectively delete that letter. So let's test out our code here and we'll start hitting that backspace key and you'll see that the letters are in fact deleting. We can start anywhere uh, we like here and 
start typing again. I can see that the program's working the way that we expect it to. I can't enter anything after the U. We can go backwards and edit this freely now as much as we like. There's just one fly in the ointment, which is if we keep hitting that backspace key, it's actually letting us go back and delete our first word as well. Now that is a no-no inside of Wordle, of course. We only want to be able to edit one word at a time. So we're going to have to do something a little similar to what we did over here where we're looking at, a, at the current row and making sure that this current square matches up with the current row. So we're gonna do a variation on what we did here. We're gonna have to do it over in the back key though. So let's go back to the back key. These are the two things that are happening that are making the word delete itself. And we're gonna make put these inside of an if statement so that they stop working if we're in the if we're not in the right row anymore. So let's go ahead and grab an if statement here. So this time we're gonna to wanna to make sure that that, uh, let, assuming we're working on the second row here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that, that current square is greater than five in order for us to, to allow us to type here. So we're gonna need a greater than sign instead of a less than sign in here this time. There we go. And we're still comparing the current squares value. So we can go ahead and plop current, oh, sorry, I put the wrong one there. Current square into the left hand area here. Now on the right hand side, we're basically trying to see if it's greater than five, which again, we can find by looking at the current row number. So our current row is two rather than one here. We need to be looking at, at a multiple of what happened in the previous row. So I'm gonna have to go and take my current row and subtract one from it to look at the previous row and multiply that by five. So we're looking at, so it's the previous row minus one times five here that we're looking at. Um, but, so that's gonna give us uh, greater than five. So you'd think that would be working and you can see that our backspace key is in fact deleting the letters, but um, when I get rid of the A and a do here, let's look at the value of our current variables here. So our current square now is six because we are ready to enter our text into the sixth square here in the screen here. But um, if we look at our equation, the current square, it's six, is still greater than the current row, this equation here works out to five. Current row two minus one is one times five is five. So six is still greater than five here. And that means that if we hit that button one more time here, it actually lets us get rid of that O here. Now the key is not deleting past there. So it is working, it's just that we have to offset this by one to get it working properly because we're always looking at the next square that we're gonna be typing. So um, we're gonna have to take the output of this equation, so all of this here, and we're gonna have to add one to it to get it working properly. So it's a little bit odd, we're subtracting one here and then multiplying and then at the end adding one to the resulting equation here and that gets us to the right square. So let's go ahead and um, and restart that program one more time just to confirm. Hello, enter, adieu, and then we'll start hitting that backspace key. One, two, three, four, five. And when I hit it that sixth time, now nothing's happening. Now that actually took me quite a while to figure out and it's not particularly intuitive. It just has to do with the fact that we're always typing on the next letter on the on the keyboard. That current square is always one more than it needs to be. With that done, we've accomplished our mission for today. We're entering text into different rows of the puzzle at the right time, and we're also able to move backwards and delete keys when we need to. 
Now the next step is going to be to evaluate the text in each row once we hit that enter button. We're going to have to compare the word that we've typed to all the words in the English language that have five letters in them. And we're going to, so we're going to have to learn to look inside a big database and compare what we've typed to what's in that database. After that, of course, we'll have to check and see uh, how our word compares to the finished puzzle word. And there's going to be a few other little details like that to clean up. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.